One of the main tools we have in our toolbox when it comes to cybersecurity is encryption. We don't want somebody to capture our traffic and be able to read our traffic. So what can we do? We can encrypt it. We can scramble it up in such a way that only the intended recipient is going to be able to read that traffic. That's our focus in this video. Hi, my name is Kevin Wallace, and we're going to be looking at a couple of different types of encryption in this video. And those are symmetric and asymmetric encryption approaches. We'll see what the difference is, what the advantages are of one versus the other, and we'll take a look at some common encryption standards out there like DES, Triple DES, RSA, AES. And then we'll walk through an example of using symmetric encryption. And next up is an asymmetric encryption example. Specifically, we're going to be pretending to buy something from Amazon.com and we're going to see how a certificate authority is going to play a role in using a digital certificate from Amazon to make sure that we are really communicating with Amazon and we can send our credit card information securely. Now, by the way, this topic on encryption, this is one of the many topics included in my CCST networking video training series available on Udemy. If you'd like to check that out and go after Cisco's entry-level network certification, just go to udemy.com slash ccst networking. Now let's jump into this excerpt from the CCST networking course where we'll take a look at the fundamentals of encryption. In this video, we want to take a closer look at encryption. How do we scramble up data such that if a bad actor intercepts that data, they're not going to be able to read the data because it's all scrambled up. However, the intended recipient, they are able to read the data. And there are two broad categories of encryption I want you to know about. The first one is symmetric encryption. Now, symmetric means that the source and the destination for this encrypted traffic, they're going to have a symmetric key. And a key is a big long string of data that can be used to unlock or decrypt our encrypted data. And a symmetric key means the source and the destination have the same key. It's called a shared secret key. And you might wonder, how do we get that shared secret key to those different devices? Well, one way is to do it out of band, where maybe we uh, call somebody up on the phone and we have them enter this shared secret key, or we give it to somebody on a USB flash drive as an example. But somehow the source and destination, they have the same shared secret key, and it's able to encrypt and decrypt the data. And it's very, very fast. And there are a few different encryption algorithms that use symmetric keys I want you to know about. The first one is DES. That stands for Data Encryption Standard. And this is a very old one. This is no longer considered secure. This was developed back in the mid-1970s, and it uses a 56-bit key. More secure than DES is something called Triple DES, written 3DES. This was developed in the late 1990s. It uses three 56-bit keys for a total of 168 bits and it is considered to be more secure than DES. However, that really depends on how we implement triple DES. It can be implemented in different ways. One way to do this implementation is to have all three of those 56-bit keys be different. There's another way where two of the keys could be the same and one is different, or you could have all three be the same 56-bit key. That's going to give us backwards compatibility with DES, but it's not terribly secure. But triple DES overall is considered more secure than DES. However, today, sort of the flagship encryption algorithm that we're going to be turning to most often is AES. That's the Advanced Encryption Standard. This was released back in 2001, and it can use a variety of key lengths. For example, it could use a 128-bit key, a 192-bit key, a 256-bit key, and the more bits, the more secure the key. And this is what is widely used on our networks today, including wireless networks. Now let's contrast symmetric keys with asymmetric keys. Asymmetric keys are different. They're asymmetric. In other words, the source and the destination in this conversation, they can have different keys. And we're going to walk through an example of how that works. We'll pretend that we're going to go buy something on Amazon.com and we'll see how that asymmetric key works. 
and the algorithm that is typically used is called RSA. And those are the initials of the developers of this algorithm, Rivest, Shamir, and Adelman. But first, let's take a look at symmetric encryption. Here, the client wants to send traffic confidentially to the server. Well, it's going to have a shared key. That key is shared with the server. They have the same key. And the client is going to scramble the data up using that shared secret key. The server can then take its key, which matches, and it can decrypt that data. Again, this happens very rapidly. Asymmetric encryption is much slower, but it can be more flexible because we still have the challenge of how do we get this shared secret key on these two different devices. So let's take a look at a common example of asymmetric encryption. And in this example, we'll pretend that we're going to go out to Amazon.com to buy something. And notice in this topology, on the internet, we have a server labeled Certificate Authority. And depending on what literature you read, you might alternately see that labeled as a Certification Authority or simply a CA for short. But that CA is a trusted third party. We know that if that CA says that something sent from Amazon is really from Amazon, we can trust it. Let's go through the steps of how this happens. Amazon is going to have a digital certificate, typically an X.509 version 3 digital certificate. And that digital certificate that it got from a trusted third party, let's just pretend it's VeriSign. There are many different companies out there. That's the first one that comes to mind, though. Let's pretend that they got this digital certificate from the CA, in other words, the trusted third party of VeriSign. And when they're given this digital certificate, they receive two keys, a public key and a private key. Here's how they work. If I encrypt something with the public key, it can only be decrypted with the private key. And if something is encrypted with the private key, it can only be decrypted with the public key. Now, the public key, I will make freely available to the public. But the private key, I'm going to keep that private. I'm not going to give that to anyone. So let's see how this can play into this secure connection. The client wants to buy something from Amazon.com. And to do that, it wants a secure connection to enter credit card information. So we communicate to Amazon.com that we would like to have a secure communication with them so that we can buy something. And Amazon.com says, all right, here's how we're going to do this. Take a look at my digital certificate. And the server sends the digital certificate to the client. Now, this digital certificate contains Amazon's public key. Remember that the public key is available to the public, to whoever wants it. But I want to make sure that this certificate really did come from Amazon, not just somebody claiming to be Amazon. And to do that, I can make sure that it is signed by a trusted third party, like VeriSign. We'll pretend that they are the CA in this example. And when I say signed, I'm talking about encrypted. You see, VeriSign, they also have a public and private key. And they have encrypted Amazon.com's digital certificate with their private key, meaning it can only be decrypted with their public key, which again, they will freely give out to anyone. So we're going to use the CA's public key to decrypt this digital certificate that Amazon.com sent us. And if it successfully decrypts that Amazon.com digital certificate, we know that that certificate really did come from Amazon because we just decrypted it using our CA's public key. Which brings up the question, how did we get the CA's public key? It's built into your web browser. If you dig into your web browser, you may be able to find an area where it shows you the trusted third parties that are known to that browser. And you can go in and look at the digital certificates that are built into your web browser. So VeriSign, as an example, their public key, it was built into the web browser. So we can use that to check the validity of another digital certificate that we receive that has been signed, in other words, encrypted by the CA's private key. We can make sure it really is coming from the party that we think we're communicating with. So at this point, I have in my possession a validated copy of Amazon.com's digital certificate, which contains Amazon.com's public key. So what I'm going to do as the client I'm going to generate a random string and I'm going to send it over to Amazon. But before I do that, this big random string that I'm going to call the session key, I'm going to encrypt it with Amazon.com's public key. That means if somebody were to intercept this communication in transit, they would not be able to see what this session key is that I just created randomly because they would have to have Amazon.com's 
private key to decrypt something that I've encrypted with their public key. And Amazon doesn't give that out. So this session key is going to be sent over to Amazon.com. And when they get it, they can decrypt it with their private key, which only they are in possession of. And when they decrypt it, suddenly they see this big random string that my computer made that we've called the session key. And the reason we say it's a session key, it's going to be valid for the duration of the session. But do you see what's happened here? We now have a shared secret key. The client and the server, they have a symmetric key. They're the same. And this key, the session key we're calling it, is going to be used for the duration of this session. And we mentioned that symmetric encryption was a lot faster than asymmetric encryption. Well, now we can switch over to symmetric encryption. We used asymmetric encryption just long enough to get symmetric encryption set up to do that key exchange. And now we can use the very fast symmetric encryption.